So here's my introductory notes, right? So I'm a total mind mapper. You, I know you can't read this, but if you're interested in mind mapping, <laughs> I love um, teaching about that. And I have a little course with Tiffany about how to make your own mind map. So this morning I was writing the introduction and the notes were just like too hard, too disconnected. And once I put it on a map, then I can I can follow that. So welcome, everyone. It's great to have you all here. Right now, we have a lot of people online, 240 people. I want to welcome anyone who's new to Feldenkrais, too. This is a totally appropriate place to be. I'll give a little introduction to uh, the method, the learning method that we'll be using. And it's also great for all of you uh, experienced people. And there's a number of practitioners here, too. So welcome, everybody. It's really great to see you all. This, I think, is, yeah, this is my first class in 2023. <laughs> So maybe it's your first class in 2023, a good way to start off the year. So the theme of for today, and this is an introduction to the course that I'm going to be uh, starting January 18th in two weeks on a Wednesday also at the same time, uh, sponsored by Tiffany, which is so, so wonderful to have um, that kind of support and help. And that theme is going to be abdominals in action. Right. And I became very interested in the abdominals during my pelvic floor study, because everyone that I studied with kept talking about the importance of the abdominals. And I really didn't want to believe it. But as I studied more, I discovered that the abdominal muscles are this incredibly complex and subtle system. And it's not just a matter of pulling them in or pushing them out or whatever, but they're involved in every single action that we do. So that's our theme for today, but also the theme for the six weeks of the Abdominals in Action course. Um, so Feldenkrais Method is really about learning, right? Learning to learn. And that means like trusting your ability. Um, you need certain kinds of skills to be able to learn in Feldenkrais Method. And one skill, it's very simple, is to use your sensory um, skills to make distinctions. And in the kinds of distinctions that you can make, you can really only make a couple of distinctions. Is it more or less, same or different, right? That's it. And that's the kind of process we'll be learning uh, today, using to learn today. Is it more or less, same or different? And when you can make those kinds of distinctions, then you can hopefully make some choices. And the choices that you make for your own movement are very personal. Because if you've had surgery or an accident or a neurological um, diagnosis that you've received, you, your body's a little different, right? And you have to learn how to awaken your sensory uh, apparatus. It's a crazy word to use apparatus, but your whole sensory system so that you can learn how to use yourself in a way that's comfortable, and not painful and allows the abdominal system to be integrated into the whole body because the abdominals are always working more or less, same or different. And you knew how to do this when you were learning, when you were just learning how to crawl or walk, right? Nobody taught you. You learned, ah, if I do this, I feel more stable. And even if it's not really with words, it's something that we can feel. So when we're thinking of the abdominals, I'm thinking of this whole system of the self, right? It includes all the parts, the pelvic floor, the bones of the spine, the pelvis, the hips, the ribs, and also other kinds of movements like breathing. Um, and, and in that, there's the use of the whole self. And Feldenkrais says a very interesting thing about the whole self, that the whole self isn't just your physical movement. It can includes your thoughts and your feelings, your sensations and your movement. So today's lesson won't go so much about the thoughts or the feelings, but we'll be doing a lot with sensations and with uh, movement to develop this subtle and complex awareness of the use of the abdominals. It's not at all about sit-ups or doing crunches. That's really not the way to get functional uh, abdominals that are going to participate in all of your actions. 
So what can you expect from the class? So I think the main thing you can expect is to have some kind of learning experience that will be very individual for you. And to that learning experience, if you can bring these certain attitudes of curiosity, uh, being open, and, and being willing to compare and not just be right, like choose one thing to do and think, oh, well, that's the way it is. That's the way it was like handed down to me <laughs> from, uh, you know, some expert. You want to find out what it is for yourself. You might have complete clarity about doing something, which is great because then you can increase your awareness. Or you could be very confused. Like, I don't know. I can't figure this out. And that is the place where you can learn. You know, for me, I know I've said this in other uh, classes, but when I'm in a lesson and there's something that I cannot figure out, I get very excited <laughs> because that I'm going to learn something, right? So that might happen for you. And another expectation is you can learn to when you need to rest and when you need to pause. And it's very non-competitive. And you might learn like, oh, I'm competing with myself. And I think when we're with uh, on Zoom, one nice thing about it is it sort of eliminates the competition with other people, right? Because <laughs> you're not around them. Maybe there's one other person with you and that's fine, but don't try to do everything that everybody else does. Really take the time to sense and feel. And one um, expectation is this ability to find comfort and the quality. So in Feldenkrais, it's, we use the improving the quality of movement as a way for your nervous system to, uh, or you actually, to make choices. That quality will integrate. Quality will give you better coordination. If your movement is jerky or sudden or stiff, that's not the quality you're looking for. You're looking for a quality that it just feels really great. Like you're at your favorite place, no worries. Everything is really easy to do. Uh, yeah, so that's, I guess, it for the introduction. So now we can get started on the lesson. So the lesson will be done, uh, we'll begin with standing, then you'll lie down, then you'll stand up again, and then the lesson will continue in uh, lying down. Okay. All right, so just come to standing. And have your weight on both feet, right? So think that having your weight on both feet even, and maybe your legs just tiny bit wider than you would normally stand, just a little bit wider so that you're really balanced. You're not worried about falling over. And bring your attention now to the weight or the pressure on your feet. Since your ankles, your knees, the hips, the spine, and let your arms hang, right? Just let your arms hang comfortably. And a little bit now, um, soft, what we call soften your knees and your ankles so you're not holding your legs stiffly, but you could, you could maybe bounce or, you know, something like that a little bit. So your legs are really uh, relaxed and you have some little bit of spring there. And now observe your gaze. Like where are you looking? And now bring your attention to your breathing. How do you know you're breathing? Can you feel movement somewhere with the breath? Can you tell when you're breathing in versus when you're breathing out? Now begin to slowly and softly just shift the weight a little bit forward on your feet, just a little bit, and then a little bit more towards the heels. So just shifting slowly forward and back. Not enough to feel like you're going to fall. This can response we can feel here happens before the falling response. So you're just shifting the pelvis a little bit forward and back. Now, as you bring the weight back, you bring the weight back, 
sense what happens in the abdominal area. And maybe you can sense this, and maybe it's too soon for you to feel this, but just feeling when you shift the weight back and before you go to the point where you might fall, can you feel that the abdominals do some work to support you? When you go forward, there's also some work that happens, but it's not quite as obvious. So just as you're going back, see if you can feel that. You may, if you have a sensitivity to the movement and the contraction in your pelvic floor, also notice that as you go back, just before you start to go too far, that you can feel the pelvic floor contract also. That means those the Kegel muscles, the muscles if you were not trying to pee or something like that, that you would feel those also contract as you go backward. Okay, and now come back to the middle and sense just a balanced middle where the your breath can really move your whole breathing space, the front of the breathing space, the sides of your breathing space, and the back of your breathing space. Now, with your hands, find the bottom of your breastbone, right? Just feel for the bottom. It's just to, just know, to know where it is, that's all, like that. And then go down from there towards the pubic bone and find the top of your pubic bone. Okay, so that length there from the sternum, the bottom of the breastbone, to the top of the pubic bone is a certain length, right? And that length is managed by your posture and your abdominal muscles. So now shorten that length a little bit by moving the sternum down towards the pubic bone. So you just kind of crunch a little bit or close up a little bit that space. And you think of bringing, lowering the ribs down towards the pelvic bone just a little maybe um a few centimeters okay now when you do that continue to breathe and then at one point stay in that shortened position right just a little short not too short not like you're going to bend your whole body down just a little bit of shortening that weight and stay there and feel what that shortened position does to your breathing Okay, and then come back to your normal or resting length. All of our musculature has a particular length for resting that allows for maximum use. If you always have your abdominal shortened, something happens, right? And now the same thing is if you start to just bend back a little bit and lengthen that distance in the front, like you're going to just arch back a little bit, right? So the abdominals work there to prevent you from going too far. So they're working in this as they get longer. But if you stay in that position all the time, that's going to be a problem for using your abdominals. So without any pain and just very comfortably, just go back a little bit and stay there and feel what that does to your breathing. And then come back to the middle. So you're in that balanced place. So this is where this idea of making distinctions comes in, right? Like by exploring making that length shorter or making it longer, that um, allows your whole self, your whole sensory learning system to make a decision like, oh, I like to be here. Okay, now please lie on your back. And you can have your legs long or have your legs bent.
And take a moment or a few moments here, lying down with your legs long or bent. Bend your legs if you're at all uncomfortable, right? There's nothing to be learned by being in pain except that, wow, this hurts. <laughs> so try with your legs long and then you can bend your legs. So whatever position you start in now, observe your breathing. And bring your hands to be on your belly, somewhere around the belly button or just a tiny bit lower than the belly button, just to feel there, feel what happens. Do you have movement there as you breathe? Having movement through the whole breathing space is what we want, right, for breathing. And if your abdominals are very shortened and working too much, you can't really respond to your breath there. Now, <clears throat> now pull your belly in and hold it in and feel what that does to your breathing. And then let that go and allow your whole breathing response to happen again. Right, so in each position, affords a different kind of movement of the abdomen for breathing. And when you're lying down, you don't really need to use the abdominal muscles for support. So they need to be free so that you can breathe comfortably. And now sense the contact of your back with the floor. If your legs are long, you can start at the heels, the lower legs, the upper legs. And then everybody, whether your legs are long or bent, since the weight of your pelvis on the floor, the buttocks each side, sense the contact or the lifting of the back. Right, for most people, there will be space under the back sense how that is for you. And don't try it to push your back to the floor, right? Don't try to flatten the back. Just find out what is the state of the spine resting, the back resting. And now since the rib cage And the length of your spine. So in your imagination, go from the sacrum to the back of the head. Just follow that line and get a sense of the length of your spine, not in a measurement, but in a feeling, in a sensation. Now imagine on the left side of the spine that you could draw a little circle where your shoulder is, where your left shoulder is, just some point that you notice, ah, this is my left shoulder point. And then to the right side, the right shoulder point. And then go down to your hips, sense where your left hip joint is. So we're not talking about the sides of the hip, right? Where you would like touch the side of your hip, but where the joint is. And the joints are about, of the hips, are about a hand width apart. Just a little lower than your pubic bone. And now since those four points, and if you're, I ask or suggest that you sense something or move in a way that you think I can't sense that or I can't do that. You just go along with it and gradually, gradually, slowly, awarenesses will improve. 
and your ability to do movements will improve. And now come up to standing again, please. So roll to your side and stand again. And find that comfortable stance with the feet balanced forward and back, left and right. And now place your hands on your belly, below your belly button. And again, feel the movement here. So many people who have done martial arts, right? There's this breathing into the dantian, which is an imaginary point behind the belly button. But you're just feeling how the movement is different when you stand. So anything that you learn in one position, we don't take that as like a rule that it has to happen like that in other positions. But using your sensation, you can find what's what's appropriate for that position okay and once more now lie on your back and see when you lie on your back this time now has anything just this little bit of awareness has anything changed in the contact, in the breath. And we move slowly through the lesson. Sometimes movements are done fast, but the transition from one uh, ex movement experiment to the next is going to be kind of deliberate so that there is time for you to notice and time to learn. You know, somatic learning, Mindful movement takes time. And Feldenkrais can be called a, a form of mindful movement. Now, what do you notice or know about your exhale? Since when does the exhale begin? How do you know that? What are you feeling? So just sense the moment of exhalation. Perhaps you notice the belly changing, or maybe you notice the breath, the air coming out of the nose, and that you warm, the, the upper lip gets a little bit warmer as you exhale. But see if you can really feel that moment of the exhalation begins. And we're going to use this moment of the beginning of your exhale as the time that you do movements. So with your legs long or bent, whatever is comfortable for you, take both arms now and bring them to lie um, on either side of your head, like, an, like you're going to be an X. So they're a little bit wider, the elbows are straight. And you can really let the whole weight of the arms be on the floor. So some people will have the arms, you know, where the, you're, with the spine and the arms, you're like the letter Y. And some people will be more like the letter T or someplace in between. But someplace where you can really let the weight of the arms go, that you're not holding in the chest to hold the arms there. And again, when do you exhale? Did having the arms up change any of the contact with your back? Bring your arms back down by your side. And now bend your knees so that everyone will have their knees bent and the feet are flat on the floor, not together. The legs are not touching, they're wide so that they can be comfortably balanced there. And again, now sense the contact of your back, especially notice the lower back. So where, how your pelvis is lying on the floor. 
is there more pressure, it seems, going towards the tailbone or towards the top of the pelvis? And sometimes you have to make a little movement to figure that out. That's okay. Right? But wherever your pelvis is just resting, leave it there. <laughs> and now bring your arms to lie again on either side of your head so they can completely rest on the floor. Did that change the contact at all in your low back, in your upper back? And if it did, what is that about, right? Is it possible to bring the arms up and not have any lifting of the back? All right. Observe when you exhale, and as you begin to exhale, lift the right shoulder, and the way you lift the right shoulder is you're going to lift the whole arm with the right shoulder, so you're just lifting the whole arm a little bit with the shoulder lifting, and then you lower it, and the lift can be very small. It's actually better if it's really small, so imagine you have like a towel underneath the right arm and you want to unweight yourself so that the towel could be pulled out do that on an exhale and when you put the arm back down you completely let it go that's right it looks like one has it so you're lifting the entire arm from the shoulder so that shoulder point right the shoulder point you lift the whole arm lifts a little bit from the floor and it goes down and you lift as you exhale. Do you sense anything happening in the abdomen, in the abdominal muscles as you lift? So what you can look for is a sense of like a little bit of getting tighter, a little bit of work because the abdominals are going to help support the torso. All of this uh, new, not new, but the last 25 years of research about the use of the abdominals has shown that the abdominals contract milliseconds before you use the arm, just when you have that idea. So lifting and just see if you can feel the way the abdominals support the torso. Okay, leave the right arm alone. And now try that with your left arm, lifting the left arm from the shoulder, just a little bit, right? It can feel quite heavy when you lift a little bit. So just do what's comfortable, nothing painful. And you do that as you exhale. And can you feel your abdominals respond? Not like you're pulling them in tightly or anything like that, but there's something that happens. It's a subtle sensation that in Feldenkrais, we often use the term organizing. How your body organizes itself to allow this movement to happen. So let the left arm rest a moment. Bring your attention again to the breathing, to knowing when you exhale. And now when you're ready with an exhale, just slightly lift both shoulders and both arms. And you feel an action in the abdomen. And you keep the pelvis where it is so you don't flatten your back or anything like that. You're trying to maintain this um, natural curve of your spine. But just lift both arms and lower. And when you lower them, completely let them go. So that you begin each movement anew. Exhaling, lifting both arms. You may also feel when you do this that as the abdominals get activated, 
so does the pelvic floor. So if you have that kind of sensitivity that you can feel that, great. Because the research also shows that whenever your abdominals contract, the pelvic floor responds. Whenever the pelvic floor contracts, the abdominals respond. So we're looking for this full action. But you're not like directing the back to flatten, right? The back stays as it is. So there's, this is what I mean about the complexity of the abdominals. They stabilize the spine. They keep your pelvis where it is. And they work in another way to help you lift the shoulders. And now bring your arms down and take a pause, please. So the pauses in a lesson allow your nervous system to just take a little break. And perhaps when you rest, a new sensation can come forward that you can feel. All right, now bend both knees, have both feet flat, and bring your arms to the comfortable position. So if you had any uh, pain in your shoulders afterwards, just bring your arms down a little bit. Don't strain. And if your arms are better by your side, that's fine. But lie now with your arms a little bit wider, at least, and the palms turned upward. So wherever you can have them, we're completely supported. Now bring your attention to the contact of your pelvis. The two points of the back of the hips resting on the floor and the shoulders resting and feel that impression that you make on the floor and begin to make a very small movement as if to lift the right foot from the floor without moving the pelvis a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to move a little bit, but you don't want your pelvis to rock to the right side. How can you stabilize a very important function of the abdominals to manage the torso? And when we're lying down, can you feel that you can lift the foot? First, the heel comes away, then the ball of the foot leaves. Do this on an exhale. Can you feel the work in the abdominals to support your torso? If you've recently had a baby or had surgery or a serious uh, injury to the spine or the abdomen, Go very gently, allow the body to wake up. Okay, leave the right leg standing. And now do the left leg, just lift it a little bit as if that towel is now under the foot and you're asking someone to pull it out, All right? So you just unweight it a little. And when you lift, keep your pelvis where it is. Don't let it roll to the side. So that means that as you lift the left leg, I can see some people, the left side of the hip is going closer to the floor. Control that, don't let that happen. That's right. It's hard, it's very hard to do. This is kind of the sort of uh, idea of pelvic stabilization. You need your abdominals to stabilize your pelvis and your torso. Okay, stand the left leg. And now thinking first, first thinking and imagining. Imagining that you will lift both legs the tiniest amount. It's enough to just imagine unweighting both legs as you exhale and feel the incredible uh, work of your abdominals to do that. 
So you just lift both feet a little bit, like the tiniest amount, just enough to unweight, like it's an electrical connection between your feet and the floor, and you're just breaking the connection, breaking the circuit. Can you feel how your abdomen jumps in to support your torso? Don't lift the lower back and don't flatten it. Can you keep it right where it is? Breathing out. It's not an easy movement, so go very gently with yourself. Don't do anything that's painful. And perhaps you need, again, to do each leg first and then go back to both legs to find that organization. Okay, stop, bring both feet down, lower your legs if that's comfortable for you, bring your arms down and pause a moment. And notice the breath. Did you take a deeper breath when you stopped the movement? That's a sign that you've made more space that something perhaps has let go. The thing about the abdominals is they are attached to ribs. And as your abdominals get better organized, they allow the full rib movement for breathing. The diaphragm is important for breathing, as is the movement of the ribs. And the diaphragm is also attached to the ribs, so it can improve uh, the way that you can breathe, the freedom of your breath. Once more now, bend your knees and bring the arms to either side so that they're on a diagonal. And have your legs a little bit wider so the right arm is on a diagonal line to the left thigh and the left arm can be as much as possible without pain. If you have to have your legs long, uh, your arms down a bit, that's fine. But the left arm is on a diagonal to the right leg. And many people are yawning. Yawning is also a great sign that something is letting go, that the diaphragm, the abdominals, the ribs, all are able to move and make more space. And now lift from the shoulder, the right shoulder and right arm, and the left foot without letting anything shift on the floor. So you can do this with your legs bent. It's a little easier than having the legs long. If you want to do it with your legs long and it's comfortable, that's fine. But I think it's a little easier with the leg bent. So you're just lifting the right shoulder and right arm, the right foot tiny amounts, not letting your pelvis shift left or right or up and down so the back stays where it is. And you do it as you exhale and feel the work of your abdominals. And maybe it's a new feeling for you to sense that like, oh, it's not a big contraction. It's an organization contraction. Go gently, easily. Okay, let that rest for a moment. And bring your attention now to the front of your belly, like the soft part of your belly and the sides where you would be maybe ticklish, that whole side area. <clears throat> That's really where the abdominals are most uh, sensed, is in the front and a little bit on the sides. In the back, they curve around your back and they attach not to vertebra, but they attach in the back to other muscles. So you might feel some response also in the back of the, the muscles are, have names, they're called quadratus lumborum and the iliopsoas. You might feel some response there as those muscles have to respond too. That's why it's a system, can't just do one thing. And now, Lift the uh, left arm from the shoulder and the right leg and feel the belly 
the sides and the front, how they organize to help you do that. Without that, everything feels super heavy. And you're not arching the back or flattening the back. It's just very simple, very easy. As you breathe out. So this is the left shoulder and the right foot, right? Nice. From what I can see, people are doing the movement without moving the pelvis. And that's what you're looking for, the stabilizing function to the skeleton. Right? Okay. Now, can you do both arms again? Lift both from the shoulder. Is it possible to feel any more into what's happening to organize? And perhaps when you start to lift both arms, you can feel your pelvic floor also go in. That gets pulled up because you, the uh, abdominals and the torso are trying to manage how much pressure is in the abdominal cavity where your organs are and distribute that. Okay, leave that. And again, now just lift both legs a little bit. But the pelvis stays where it is. It doesn't arch. Your back doesn't arch and you don't flatten. You just organize to be able to unweight or imagine unweighting both legs. Okay, lower your legs, slide your arms down slowly and pause. And perhaps in this pause, you can notice the feeling, the sensation in the lower abdomen across the, uh, you know, the bones that stick out in front of the pelvis. Another reason why the pelvic floor is engaged with the abdominals is at the bottom of the uh, rectus abdominis, which is the abdominal muscle in the middle, there's another muscle called the pyramid, pyramid, it's spelled like pyramid with Alice at the end. I just can't say it at the moment, but that muscle, its job is to tighten up and help the pelvic floor feel supported. So that's one reason why you do feel maybe something a little activated there. And now again, bend both legs. So both feet are flat, bring your arms up on either side so that your arms can completely rest. The palms are up. And now in your own style, your own way, just go through lifting each limb and putting it down. Lifting the shoulder so the arm lifts and then maybe the other shoulder or the legs. You can do it in whatever way you want. Can you do this in a way that keeps your pelvis stable, keeps the torso stable? You breathe out as you do the movement. And maybe you find like, oh, you can do it with one leg, but not the other, or one arm and not the other. Like, what is that about, right? That we have these asymmetries to our movement. And by learning to make these distinctions of more or less, same or different, allows you to notice. Notice increases awareness. Awareness brings change. Okay, 
Now, pause a moment with the arms and legs. And again, lift when you're ready with your exhale. Lift both arms from the shoulders. Can you feel more? Are we doing anything here that's stimulating your sensation <clears throat> or your movement? Okay, leave both arms down. <clears throat> and now lift both legs a little bit, just a little, without arching the back or flattening the back. The belly is going to get pulled in, right? But pulled in in a certain way. And if you find that your belly is pushing out as you do this, see if you can pull it in a little bit, maybe 20% of what's possible. The pelvis always stays in the same position not flattening, not arching, not rocking left and right. Okay, pause again. And now can you do both arms, both shoulders, and both legs? So you lift all four, just a little. The head stays down the length of the spine from your sacrum to the back of your head. Imagine that line gets longer as you lift, that you maintain this length of the spine. Right? It's pretty big organizing. Okay. And lower your arms and lower your legs. Do you feel any new space for breathing? Bend your legs, have both feet standing. And now sense the left hip joint where you would put that little circle at the left hip and the right shoulder joint and make a small move. So sense the length of that line, right? It's a certain line and then lift the right shoulder and the left hip joint towards each other. So you just shorten a little bit and feel how you do that through negotiating the abdominals, right? So your foot can stay on the floor. You're just shortening the diagonal line that connects the left hip joint to the right shoulder. And something happens to do that through the abdomen. And now switch to the other diagonal. So now you have the right hip, left shoulder. Just a small movement, right? You can, what I'm trying to help you understand and sense is the subtlety and the complexity of using the abdominals that we don't decide how to use them. We explore all these different variations. Okay. That's it. And pause a moment. Bring your arms up again to that kind of X position. And thinking of your four points staying where they are, the space under the low back staying as it is, 
and on exhale. So listen to your exhale. And when you have the exhale, then just start to lift both, all the, both arms and both legs, the shoulders and the legs and the little bit. Feel the organization of the torso to do that. Breathing out. And as you do that, allow the spine to stay long or even get longer. That's nice. A little bit. And if you, you know, if it's been enough for you, it's enough for you. Just do what's easy. It seems uh, like a simple lesson. And yet this ability to really organize takes awareness, sensation, practice. Okay. Let that go. Bring your arms and legs down. Has the space underneath your back changed? Or under the shoulder blades or in the middle of the spine? Again, now bring your hands to feel your breathing. And now slowly come to roll to your side and come up to standing. Feel the weight on your feet. Let your arms just hang, just freely hang. You don't have to do anything with them. What is your awareness now like of the distance between your pubic bone and the bottom of your breastbone? This is an easy place to become aware of. It's in the front of us, right? And now slowly shift your weight forward and back towards the heels, aware of your breathing. And you'll find that your body breathes itself as you do this. For many people, when you go towards the back, you'll find you exhale. And that's where you can feel the abdominal muscles pulling in. Right, you don't want to go so far that you fall <laughs> or fall over, but it's just that point where you can feel this changing all day long. And perhaps during the day today, when you're doing something like lifting a pot of water off the stove or your kettle. As soon as you start to lift, your abdominals will engage or carrying a grocery bag or um, walking. Okay, thank you very much.